I'm Haley Sheldon. I'm a multidisciplinary artist and my latest body of work is hopefully very sculptural and it combines um, shaped wood frames that I weave into and create these almost art objects that can be um, presented on a wall as a, a wall-based piece or um, as we, you'll see in a little bit um, floating or more of a kinetic sculpture um, type of piece. The piece itself is a Baltic birch plywood frame that is cut uh, and then has holes drilled around the entire perimeter, every quarter of an inch. And then sometimes it's more or less of a quarter of an inch to accommodate for the curve, um, just with the geometry of it, get to the yarns as close to a quarter inch apart as I can, then the spacing needs to vary. So it does get a little technical. Um, but once the frame is shaped, I sand it and coat it in a very light coating of uh, like a natural rub-on poly. Uh, just to give it a little bit of a protection. I don't want it to give a sheen or anything. I like the satiny matte texture of the wood. Not only does the plywood keep it very strong and be able to make these shapes <clears throat> and delicate curves, but I like to see the stacking or the striation of the lamination of the ply on the side. Uh, just gives like another textural, a uh, point of textural interest. And then you can also see as I weave in and out, um, the, the stitch on the side of the wood. And that was really important for me to make sure that the method of making was evident in the piece. So you can follow the hand and think, oh, you know, how many times was this yarn pa passed in and out of the frame? And I think that in itself tells a story um, of its making. And you can see I kind of gravitate more towards very simple shapes, um, circles, squares, rectangles, things with soft arches. I don't want ever, anything to ever feel very hard or pointy or more of a, a tense piece, if that's a way to describe it. This is um, the lozenge shape, and this is the largest piece that I have done so far. And it was really interesting to me uh, because there's no front or back to the pieces that, um, that this would hang with a certain presence and um, you can encircle the whole thing and, and view from all sides and, and see what um, your view through the weaving, how that can change uh, your environment or your perception of the environment as you circle around. Um, it, so yes, hanging kind of at a person level, so it has its own, it's almost like its own, not a being, obviously it's not alive, but it has its own, holds its own um, space in the room. And I also really was interested in a subtle gradient, super subtle. So from the front, it almost looks like we're looking at a neutral piece with a neutral wood and a neutral yarn. But uh, when you circle around, you can see that there's a very soft uh, color shift going from a very light peach pink to blue, a little bit of a mint, and then back to pink and fade out, fading out again to white. So there is a lot going on in the weaving, although it looks very simple and minimal. So a little bit uh, more of a co contemplative piece I feel like and um, wanting to give off a feeling of uh, stillness, calm, and, and almost a meditative quality since that's what I, uh, how I feel while I'm making it. The repetition of movement really uh, gets me in a headspace that feels still and calm and in a good way, very peaceful. So that's what that piece is about. Um, so when I'm choosing the names for the colors, it, even that choice is really important to me. I mean, because they are so minimal, it's almost like every choice is so important and is giving you some information about the work and a feeling about the work. So when I'm choosing the names for the colors of yarn, I really think about um, what memory or um, past experience am I trying to distill down into this color or is there something from childhood or a, someone that I know that um, embodies that color or a, a lot of them come from nature so um, like this one is pollen and so just a really summery bright vibrant yellow makes me think of maybe being outside in a, a field and seeing pollen blow off a flower so I'm really naming a color off of a, a memory or you know a a past experience of so that's where the names come from. So here we have a, a larger arrangement where I consider this one piece altogether, even though it's composed of many shapes. 
the title is based off of the piece as a whole and no longer the individual shapes and colors as I was mentioning earlier. This one, I really wanted to feel more lyrical and have a lot of movement. Still, I'm often inspired by uh, subtle transitions in the natural world. So in this case, which is a theme that I revisit often is um, the sunset to dusk transition and whether that be movement, color palette, um, but just kind of keeping in those, those tones. And you can see in some of the pieces, often I will start to blend, just as in the large lozenge that we first saw, there's several colors, but I often do two similar colors transitioning from one to another. So it just gives it a very subtle color difference. And there's uh, here in the pinks and over there in the peaches, you can see there's those transitions going on. 